Congratulations on the awards that you have received from the University of Huddersfield. They are a tribute to your hard work here during your years as a student and also to the support of your family and friends. I hope you have enjoyed your time at Huddersfield and that you carry away fond memories of the university, the town, the region and most importantly perhaps the friends that you have made here at university. Friendships established at university often last for a lifetime. I hope you're becoming established in your chosen careers and that you're finding that the qualifications you've received here at the University of Huddersfield are serving you well. The university has an excellent reputation of enabling students to get into their chosen world of work and I hope that you're finding both worthwhile and rewarding employment. Do not lose touch with us over the next few years. We like to know how our students are getting on and I hope that you feel that you'll be able to be ambassadors for the university in your chosen areas of work. So many congratulations on behalf of the university and we wish you all the very best for the future. I call upon the Chancellor, Sir Ernest Hall, to open the proceedings. Your Worships, Vice-Chancellor, Chairman of Council, Members of Council, my Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure and privilege to preside over this last final ceremony of this week's awards. And I know that this is an important occasion, it's a unique occasion for all of you, and you're going to enjoy it, and we're going to enjoy it. And I now ask the academic registrar to conduct us through the ceremony. At this ceremony, we are recognising the awards that have been conferred on the former students of the School of Music and Humanities. I now call upon the Dean, Professor David Taylor, to present those students.
Chancellor, I have great pleasure in presenting the following students from the School of Music and Humanities. I present Fiona Louise Bolan for the award of Doctor of Philosophy. I present Marion Corns for the award of Doctor of Philosophy. I present for the award of Master of Arts in History, David Gordon Naylor. <laughs> Patricia Margaret Sims. <laughs> I present for the award of Master of Arts in Music, Rachel Mifanwi Bentle. <laughs> Catherine Michelle Day. <laughs> Nicholas Dunn. <laughs> John Hales. Richard Andrew Jones. <laughs> Paul Kent. <laughs> Emma Elizabeth Maidment. <laughs> Deborah Jane Page. Alan James Robert Smith. Sean Leslie Ward. Stuart Andrew Worthy. I present for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in History, Lynn Michelle Shepherd. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Music with Theatre Studies, Rachel Katrina Morass. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History, Mark Andrew Adams. <laughs> David Edward Bignall. <laughs> Ian John Bolton. Claire Louise Buckton. Edwin James Chapman. Lisa Christian. Richard Scott Copley. Paul Christopher Dale. John Paul Doran.
Christopher James Ewing. <laughs> Stephen Robert Franklin. <laughs> Natalie Kate Furness. Liam Kevin Gallagher. <laughs> Daniel Green. <laughs> Angela Gulliford. <laughs> Lindsay Hilton. Stephen Paul Higgins. <laughs> Abigail Claire Hurst. <laughs> Richard Ashley Horton. <laughs> Hannah Jane Johnson. Sarah Louise Kenyon. <laughs> William Kilner. <laughs> James Kingswell. <laughs> Anna Louise Kyorkian. Alan William John Lamperell. <laughs> Rene Louise Lee. <laughs> Michael Richard Leach. <laughs> Matthew John Leake. James Stuart Lindsay. <laughs> Jeanette Alison Lucraft. <laughs> Martin John Linden. <laughs> Tracy Ann Marsden. Richard David Moorcroft. <laughs> Joanne Myers. <laughs> Martin James Phelps. <laughs> Raymond Pratt. Andrew Price. <laughs> Stuart William Ross. <laughs> Greg Stuart Cheville. <laughs> Kevin Paul Smith. Daniel James Swift. <laughs> Catherine Angela Tetley. <laughs> Tracy Louise Tomlinson. <laughs> Michael James Townsend. Claire Wildman.
Richard Simon Williams. Andrew Wilson. Jeffrey Peter Yates. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and History, Anne-Marie Helen Banks. <laughs> Helen Beckett. <laughs> Darren Lee Burley. Wendy Amanda Hall. <laughs> Natalie Hunter. <laughs> Pauline Margaret Leach. Stephanie Elizabeth Owen. <laughs> Kirstina Renee Patterson. <laughs> Gareth David Roberts. <laughs> Kerry Louise Spanner. Ian Thomas Wilson. <laughs> Stephen Christopher Wilson. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History with Sociology, Alistair Clement Bertels. <laughs> Natalie Sarah Lord. <laughs> Joanna Morton. <laughs> Laura Pye. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History with Media, Tamsin Elizabeth Acton. <laughs> Madeline Louise Jameson. <laughs> Lucy Joanne Newbrook. <laughs> Carly Williams. Matthew Benjamin Wilson. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics, Iram Ahmed. <laughs> Damien Anthony Belshaw. Jacqueline Mary Byrne. <laughs> Alexander Edward Davies. <laughs> Emma Claire Hall. <laughs> Rebecca Hamlin. Gloria Hamilton. <laughs> Shana Louise Lewis. <laughs> 
Nicola Claire Maudsley. <laughs> David Thomas Michael McNulty. <laughs> Edward Alexander Selvey. Matthew James Sheeder. <laughs> Lakvinda Singh. <laughs> Catherine Mary Stone. <laughs> Lee Christopher Stringerlosh. Mark Peter Tanton. <laughs> Sophie Thomas. <laughs> Claire Louise Thompson. <laughs> Jonathan Stuart Henry White. Rebecca Ann Williams. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics with History, Gareth Leonard Cookson. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics with Media, Nathan Peter Brennan. <laughs> Helen Dobson. <laughs> James Andrew Giddings. <laughs> Philip Andrew Harrison. Emma Elizabeth Henshaw. <laughs> Peter James Preston. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics with Sociology, Sarah Greenwood. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Music with a Modern Language, Helen Murray. <laughs> Marie Jane Price. <laughs> Brendan Jan Walsh. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Music with English, Claire Ann Alsop. <laughs> Vicky Louise Smith. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Music Technology, Patrick Mark Cutliffe. Simon Dumpleton. <laughs> David Gritzman. <laughs> Simon Mark Harris. <laughs> Alan McDonald. Stephen David Parsons.
Richard James Weller. I present for the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Music Technology, Marco Faldetta. <laughs> Matthew Robert Groom. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Science in Music Technology, Simon Wesley Fern. I present for the award of Bachelor of Music with Honours, Sarah Abelman. <laughs> Helen Margaret Amos. <laughs> Christopher Barton. <laughs> Elizabeth Barton. Catherine Claire Blackett. <laughs> Stephen Robert Blythe. <laughs> Genevieve Deborah Braganza. <laughs> Suzanne Marie Burnell. Nicola Sasha Cassidy. <laughs> Kate Elizabeth Chisholm. <laughs> Andrea Kopok. <laughs> Petar Kurik. Wendy Ann Davies. <laughs> Matthew Marcus Dean. <laughs> Joanne Denman. <laughs> Robert Matthew Ellis. Jonathan David Fisher. <laughs> Maria Fisher. <laughs> Peter George Foster. <laughs> Matthew Robert Frost. Nicholas James Gage. <laughs> Rebecca Louise Guy. <laughs> Christopher Mark Hall. <laughs> Andrea Claire Harrison. Elizabeth Ann Hopkinson. <laughs> Emma Catherine Horsburgh. <laughs> Karen Marie Horton. <laughs> Leslie Ann Hurry. Daniela Hursthouse. Claire Louise Hustleby. Yay! 
Anna Insua Kao. Alexandra Helen King. Adam John Kitchen. Katie Suzanne Lawrence. Sally Ann Lunt. Tracy Michelle Martin. Lindsay Carol McFarlane. Lynn Stephanie McGregor. <laughs> Hannah Louise McIntyre. <laughs> Helen Julia Miners. <laughs> David Norman Mitchell. Sean Michael Moore. Robert Anthony O'Connell. Debbie Marie Oliver. Rebecca Claire Patchett. Michelle Ann Pillinger. <laughs> Stephen John Power. <laughs> Kenneth Gary Purse. <laughs> Richard Timothy Cornby. Andrew Reed. <laughs> Petra Robinson. <laughs> Philip Rosier. <laughs> Matthew Ian Colburn Rowlands. John Philip Rudkin. <laughs> and Garad Jane Sanders. <laughs> Lee Amanda Seedhouse. <laughs> Amy Carenza Sedgwick. Andrew Edward Brent Sims. <laughs> Peter Mark Simons. <laughs> Claire Marie Slate. <laughs> Jennifer Smith. Timothy Michael Smith. <laughs> Matthew William Stiff. <laughs> John Richard Thompson. <laughs> Helen Margaret Towers.
Glyn Paul Vardy. Victoria Ann Weber. Stephen Matthew Whitehead. Fiona McNeil Williamson. Esther Wise. Miriam Ann Young. I present for the award of Bachelor of Music, Richard James Evans. Matthew Pemberton. Dean Allen Slack. I present for the award of Diploma of Higher Education in Music, Jonathan Peter Wilby. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English with History, Eileen Atkinson. <laughs> Leslie Ann Wilby. <laughs> I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English Literature, Bridget Bake. Michael Peter Shaw. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Political Studies with Sociology, Jacqueline Beadle. Barbara Jones. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History with Sociology Studies, Pierre-Joseph Johannes Braben. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Sociology with Politics, Dawn Christine Fronschak. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History with Politics, Norma Alice Goodwin. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics with History, Carol Louise Haig. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History and Politics, Kevin Castleton Hawkins. <laughs> Hazel Kathleen Wilson. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and Politics, Judith Bernadette MacDonald. Frida Mary Morton. I present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in History with Politics and English, Margaret Parton.
present for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Politics with English, Valerie Jane Porter. And that concludes the awards for students from the School of Music and Humanities. The names of those unable to collect their awards are recorded in the programme. The Chancellor will now confer an honorary Doctor of Letters on John Price Jones. The oration will be given by Sir Ernest Hall, Chancellor of the University. John, welcome. John Price Jones, I would describe as a musician and an entrepreneur. But let me begin at the beginning. He started to play the piano at five, encouraged by a father who was the organist in the local Welsh chapel. As a child, he displayed a skill which has had almost mystical significance amongst musicians because he demonstrated that he had perfect pitch. Now, for those of you to whom this idea is foreign, let me explain. It means that you can hear a single note on any instrument out of context and immediately say what the note is. Perhaps you're one of the fortunate few who can do it. Or you may choose to reply, if I ask you, you may choose to reply like the Irish country gentleman in Pickwick Papers who, when asked if he could play the violin, replied that he was quite sure that he could, but he couldn't say for certain as he'd never tried. <laughs> However, if you have the aspiration to be a professional musician and, like me, haven't got perfect fit, you will feel an acute sense of inadequacy. But you will not be on your own. The reality is that most music stu students do not apparently have perfect pitch so that the chosen few who have can really be excused for feeling special. Indeed, people who have perfect pitch have usually jealously guarded the right to feel superior. It has been an exclusive club for years, but not for JPJ, as he's known affectionately by his colleagues. Jean is intent on promoting the idea that everyone has perfect pitch, and it's simply that most have lost the skill. Now that generosity of spirit and passion to let other people join the exclusive club is typical of John and his work. But let me return to the development of his career. I've already said he started to play the piano at the age of five, but the influence of the Welsh cha chapel led him into the world of the organ, choirs, and conducting. And those early influences have proved to be the foundation stones of his life and his work. His earliest experience of academic work in the grammar school was not a great success, but music came to his rescue. Building confidence in self-esteem in one thing you do well is enough to repair any damage which failure in other things creates. He became a boarder at Worcester Royal Grammar School and later joined the choir of Worcester Cathedral. It was around this time that John began to have organ lessons with Christopher Robinson, who was the organist at Worcester Cathedral. Now, you remember at the outset that I described JPJ as a musician and an entrepreneur, and I've so far described the beginning of his musical career. But let me tell you that JPJ, the entrepreneur, emerged very early in his career. Whilst at school, he began to demonstrate his considerable skill in organizing different musical activities and events, and notably when he formed Singers Anonymous, which went on to win at the Cheltenham Competition Festival. Under the guidance and tuition of Christopher Robinson, the Worcester Cathedral organist, John's musicianship and skill in playing the organ resulted in him gaining an organ scholarship to Corpus Christi College, where he studied for four years. His interest in conducting, which had already started, grew. He worked with the university orchestra, and it was during his time at the university that he had some tuition from Raphael Kubelik and at Camford with George Hurst, and it seemed increasingly likely that conducting would be his career. In practice, his pro progression to his professional career seems, looking at it now, almost seamless, because in 1969, he joined the Welsh National Opera Company as assistant chorus master. In 72, he went to Pretoria, South Africa, where he conducted the opera and ballet chorus and in 1978 became founder, chorus master and conductor of the newly formed and now celebrated Opera North. 
In 1986, he became head of music at Scottish Opera, and he also conducted the John Curry Singers. In 1984, he became music director of the Doyle Cart Company, an appointment helped considerably by his earlier experience as music director of the Gilbert and Sullivan Society whilst at Cambridge. It was around this time that he took on the job of conductor of the Halifax Choral Society, and it was at this time that I first met John. From the first moment I realized that John was not simply a musician and conductor, but somebody with an exceptional capacity to make things happen. In 1992, he joined Northern Ballet, continuing of course as conductor of the Choral Society, but he joined Northern Ballet as music director. And since that appointment, his career has developed in many ways. I think I could safely say that when he became conductor of the Halifax Choral Society, its reputation was not at the highest point in the history of the society, which happens to be the oldest society in the world. But under his guidance, the reputation of the society has grown steadily. And if you read the crits in the papers following their concerts, you will now realize that it's regarded as one of the best choirs, not only in the county, but in the country. When John became conductor of the Northern Ballet Orchestra, the orchestra was regarded as very much the second string to the dancers. But under his guidance, it has gained a reputation as one of the best professional ensembles in the country. And in 1996, the orchestra became the Northern Concert Orchestra, and it now plays regularly throughout the region. It has assumed a life of its own. He created Noel Northern Orchestral Enterprises, and it's somehow, as a consequence of all those things, that his work for young people has continued to grow and flourish. His passion to inspire and enthuse young people to sing, to listen, to play, is evidenced in the creation of Singing for Fun, Halifax Young Players, and the creation, the recreation, of the, Halifax, of the Yorkshire Youth Orchestra, which had been dormant for 20 years. And with his wife, Alison, herself a professional mus musician, they have formed five choirs for children, aged four and upwards, based on Kadai's principles. His recognition as one of our leading conductors has led to him conducting extensively throughout the United Kingdom with most of the major orchestras, and he is regularly invited to conduct abroad. He has a significant number of recordings to his credit with the Doyle Cart Company, with Halifax Choral Society, and particularly under his baton with the Northern Ballet Orchestra because all the ballets specially composed for Northern Ballet have been recorded and have received widespread acclaim and recognition. I cannot finish this tribute to my friend John Price Jones without mentioning to you that his remarkable ability to enthuse and inspire young people extends to his own family and this is a very difficult thing to achieve, I know from my own experience. As a consequence, his career is in danger of being overtaken by his son Roderick who plays lead guitar in a very successful rock band, Idlewild, and in some quarters Roderick is far more famous than his distinguished father. His nine-year-old daughter, Catherine, is already a member of the National Youth Orchestra and, I'm, if I'm any judge, is destined to have a remarkable career. John, there's no one I know who's worked harder and more convincingly, convincingly to open up the magical world, world of music to everyone. It has become a commonplace for people to say in all kinds of contexts that anyone can do it. John has the distinction of saying it in a world which has been dominated by the idea of talent. Perfect pitch was a, world, a way of dividing the world into the haves and have-nots. It demonstrates John's remarkable quality as a musical evangelist that he wants to remove that divide in every area. I think we can say we are very fortunate that a Welshman who has worked in Wales, South Africa and Scotland has finally chosen to settle here with us in Yorkshire. And John, it's my very great pleasure. I wonder if we could move to the centre. By the authority of the university, I have the greatest pleasure in awarding you the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Sir Ernest.
And of course, thank you very much to the university. I have to say I consider this a very great honor that the university has decided to confer on me this honorary doctorate. It's a particular honor to have the oration given by Sir Ernest himself. Praise from him is praise indeed. I have to say he has been a huge inspiration uh, to me. His, his positive thinking, his encouragement, his vision, and his belief in his vision, and in, indeed, his, he quoted it himself, his entrepreneurial skills have helped me tremendously, given me great uh, encouragement. Now, I was told I had two minutes to speak, so I'll start speaking a little quicker, because I've got a, a lot to say in two minutes. Uh, I'm reminded that when one sees uh, awards on television, that the, people, the recipients always say, oh, gee, I never thought, I, oh, this is, I, I'm lost for words. But I would like to thank my producer, my director, my lighting designer, the man who opened the door for me, the chap that drove the van up here. Uh, I, I, I probably should thank lots of people because my work for uh, music education has, of course, involved lots of people who've either shared my vision or been made to share it or told to share it. But particularly, uh, Sir Ernest mentioned Alice and my wife, who uh, has informed and encouraged me, particularly in the last eight years or so, in this field, uh, and in particular in the work of the Hungarian composer Zoltán Kodály and his wonderful way of teaching and encouraging young children in music. In fact, without her, my life would have been a lot simpler and far less tiring the last eight years in that respect. Music, of course, is, is, uh, is unique. When I graduated a long time ago, people frequently came up and asked me what I did in the daytime, what was my day job. It was a fairly commonplace uh, remark in those days. I'm happy to say, we should be pleased, I suppose, that that's not so common now, but people do keep coming up and saying, you do know how lucky you are to be earning a living, doing a job which you enjoy. And I don't mind people saying that. I think certainly all of us who are musicians, whether we're academic musicians, performing musicians, or whatever field of music we're in, we should remember that it is a great privilege for us to be able to work and indeed make a living from doing something which we are good at and for which we have a talent and which we enjoy. If one person comes up to me after a concert, and it does occasionally happen, and says, thank you so much, that was the most wonderful experience in my life, then I think it's all been worthwhile. I mean, sometimes two people come up after a concert, but that's <laughs> less usual. But we should remember, I think, that we are there to share this knowledge and excitement that we have for music with other people. Finally, I would like to use this honor as a weapon in my uh, attempt to lobby anybody that can be lobbied, whether it's the government, education departments, MPs, or councillors, or anybody, about the woefully inadequate uh, music provision in junior and primary schools. This country produces the most fantastic musicians. We are famous throughout the world for producing the best music sight readers in the world. Nobody can read a piece of music as quickly as we can. I'm not talking about, and we have the most fantastic orchestras, who have much less money than in other countries, but they're fantastic. I'm talking about the people who will not become professional musicians, whose lives could be changed by an experience of music. Kodai said, and made much of the fact, that the appointment of the music specialist in the primary school was one of the most important appointments because that person can completely transform a person's life. That's for a lifetime, not just for a few weeks or a year. I suppose 90% of schools in this country, primary schools, do not have a music specialist. That's incredible because they are obliged by law to deliver the music curriculum, including singing. And it's a totally stupid uh, state of affairs. Music's unique. It can it has a unique ability to alter people's lives, to stimulate, to encourage, to give confidence emotionally, physically, and spiritually, indeed, to fulfill people's life. And I think that is something which should be made available to all. Thank you very much.
I now ask Matt Gallagher, President of the Students' Union, to respond on behalf of all the former students who have received awards at this ceremony. Your Worships, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Staff of the University, Honorary Graduate, Award Holders, Families and Friends. As the President of the Students' Union, may I welcome you back to Huddersfield for this very special occasion. Remember, wearing these robes is an honour and not an excuse to run around pretending to be Batman or Harry Potter. Well, at least not while anyone's watching. As I thought about how to word this speech, I thought, what would I, as a graduate, want to say? As, like most of you, I also graduate this week. So on behalf of all of you, I'd like to thank all those friends who shared in the stress, who were there for your last-minute revision, and for those times you worked through the night to finish a project. Friends that looked after you when you were down. Friends that were always there at the best of times. Friends you'll never forget for the rest of your life. I would also like to thank the families for that comforting voice down the end of the phone. For the pampering you got when you turned up on the doorstep, penniless and starving. <laughs> and for that little bit of money to see you through to the end of next month. I'd like to thank the lecturers because no matter how much you complained at the work, fell out with, and called them all the names you could think of behind their backs, they got you through. And I'm sure they're as proud as the rest of us to see you graduating today. Strangely enough, I'd also like to thank the Students' Union for that bit of advice you needed, for that support team, society, or committee you may have joined, for the cheap beer, for the nights in the Eden nightclub that you'll never forget. And even more for the ones you can't remember. <laughs> because as we've all learnt, it's not been all work and no play. University is a learning experience on social and academic levels. And looking around the room, I can recognise a number of you have enjoyed both. As this is the final ceremony, I'd also like to thank the organisers of the event for their outstanding work this week. And finally, and I think the most important point, is to congratulate yourselves. You did it. You have discovered, as Charles Handy said, learning is not finding out what other people already know, but is solving our own problems for our own purposes by questioning, thinking, and testing until the solution is a new part of our life. You should all be truly proud to be sat in this hall today pretending to be Batman. Congratulations. Enjoy this moment. Don't forget us, and best of luck with your futures. Thank you. Chancellor to make the closing address. I just want to add a few words. I've already had the great pleasure of congratulating you individually, and I want to collectively congratulate you. It's a wonderful occasion. I've enjoyed it enormously. I'm sure you have. And I just want to leave you with one or two thoughts. The first is, I predict that there are some amongst you who will live to see the birth of the next century. The wreath lectures this year were entitled The End of Aging. And I think the most exciting and remarkable thing is that we're looking into a future now when the prospect of death is becoming more and more remote. Your lives will be extended further into the future than Shakespeare's or Newton's or Beethoven's ever could. It's an incredible thought. 
The great achievements of the past, which have often seemed to be demonstrations of the impossible, may perhaps now become demonstrations of the possible because you have a longer and longer life in which to achieve. And of course the excitement about this new world, it's a new paradigm. We used to think that coming to school and coming to a university was a time to find out what we can do and what we can't do, what we love, what we don't love, and what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. But you now need to face the fact that you will probably have to develop three or four or five careers during the course of a longer and longer life. And the idea of retirement at 60 and 65, I tell you now, you will face the fact that it will no longer be sustainable economically or socially or culturally. You're going to be living in a world in which people will expect to live a productive and satisfying life longer and longer. Indeed, today, one of the graduates who shoot me by the hand said to me, not bad for three score and ten. So there's a kind of indicator of this new world in which we're going to live. And I think it's a very exciting possibility and very exciting future. But of course, what we've got to also understand is that this moment of success, this celebration of success is one marvelous occasion. But what you really need in life is more than the ability to enjoy success. You have to begin to develop the ability to transform the failure and adversity you will one day face invariably, indubitably. And you've got to face that failure and transform that failure into success. Already economically, we're having to do this. In this part of the world, we used to believe that these great Victorian industries would last forever. The Victorians really believed when they erected them, there would never be an end to them. But we now know that nothing lasts forever. It has to change. Jobs for life are finished, and that means more and more personal responsibility, but in my view, more and more excitement for you in a longer and more fulfilling life. Today's the day to celebrate, but I hope your achievements today will encourage you to climb higher and to go further. You have more exciting possibilities ahead of you than any previous generations. Make the most of your longer lives. Become role models for your children and grand grandchildren. What ed whatever adversity you face in the future, remember one simple thing, that the only failure is to give up trying. That simple statement will give you the power to control your lives. Once again, my warmest congratulations to you and my heartfelt wishes that your, your time at this university will help you to enjoy a fulfilling and successful life. I now declare the proceedings closed. Will the congregation please stand? <laughs>